So if we look at the white matter of the spinal cord, we can see where some of these um, tracks are located. So we're going to look at both ascending and descending tracks, just a few of these. You'll see there are a lot of tracks. We're just going to look at a few. We're going to start with the ascending tracks. And so the first couple of tracks we'll look at are the, this is, they say it's a gray cell fasciculus and cuneate fasciculus, or the fasciculus uh, gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus. And that's these tracks right here. <coughs> So the um, fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus are both located in the posterior funiculus of the spinal cord. So fasciculus gracilis and cuneatus, which really combine to form one tract, are located in the posterior funiculus. Okay, so they both combine at about T6. <coughs> So they become one tract, they're really one tract, and the fibers cross in the medulla oblongata of the brain stem. These tracts carry sensory information, so they're ascending tracts, they carry sensory information that has to do with dis discriminative touch, visceral pain, vibration, and proprioception. So what kind of touch is this kind of touch? Well, discriminative touch has to do with, um, if you were to touch somebody, uh, you know, with maybe uh, two points which are separated just a little bit, they can tell that you're touching two points. So that's how that works. You can think of it as touch with regard to a clinical situation, gross clinical situation. You could look at it as just these tracks carry information related to touch. <clears throat> Visceral pain is, of course, organ pain. Vibration, you know what vibration is, and proprioception has to do with joint position in space. <coughs> so those are the first ascending tracks. The next are called the spinal thalamics. There are two, the anterior and the lateral. The anterior spinal thalamic is located in the anterior funiculus. This one carries information regarding light touch and pain. <coughs> the lateral spinal thalamic is a classic tract carrying uh, pain and temperature. So you're going to see where this one would come into play if I spill coffee. The pain and temperature of the coffee is going to be carried via the lateral spinal thalamic tract. And this one is located in the lateral funiculus of the spinal cord. Both tracts cross at where they exit the spine to one to two levels above. So textbooks differ on this. Some say they cross at the level where they exit. Some say they cross at one to two levels above where they exit. So here's a picture of where the spinal thalamics are. The lateral spinal thalamic is here, and here is the anterior spinal thalamic. So lateral spinal thalamic, lateral funiculus, anterior spinal thalamic, anterior funiculus. <coughs> the last set of ascending tracts we're going to look at are called the spinal cerebellars. There are two of these, both located in the lateral funiculus. Um, one called the anterior and one called the posterior. The anterior fibers cross in the medulla oblongata. The posterior fibers do not cross, they just go up the same side. Both of these tracks carry information for motor control related to the cerebellum. So we're talking about functions of the cerebellum here, fine motor movement, proprioception, those sorts of things. So the spinal cerebellars, here's the posterior and the anterior, both located in the lateral funiculus. All right, for descending tracts, we're just going to look at a couple. One set is called the cortical spinal, and there are anterior and lateral cortical spinal tracts. Sometimes this is known as the pyramidal system. So if you hear the pyramidal system, they're referring to the cortical spinal tracts. The anterior fibers cross at various levels, and the lateral fibers cross at the medulla. Both of these tracts, because they're descending, descending tracts, they're going to carry motor information. So sensory information, ascending tracts, motor information, descending tracts. 
So let's look at these descending tracts. Here are the pyramidal tracts, the lateral and anterior cortical spinal, lateral cortical spinal in the lateral funiculus, anterior cortical spinal in the anterior funiculus. These are very important tracts. The other descending tracts we're going to be looking at are the rubrospinals, which are located in the lateral funiculi. These carry information for motor control, posture, and coordination. So these are going to carry more unconscious types of motor information, whereas the cortical spinals carry more of the conscious motor information. Okay, so the rubrospinals um, are located here in the lateral funiculus. And of course, remember the spinal cord is symmetric, so everything you see on one side, you're going to see on the other. All right, so now we have a complete picture of our sensory motor pathway. So let's look at the spilled coffee story again. And this time, let's, um, let's use all the details. So I pull up to the drive-thru, I pick up the coffee, the lid pops off, it spills onto my hand and my arm. All right, so the, the sensors or the sensory receptors in my hand and my arm and the skin in my hand and my arm pick up the sensory information, pain, temperature, touch, and pressure, convert that information to electrochemical impulses which follow an afferent pathway to the central nervous system or spinal cord. This information now moves up the ascending tracks. So pain and temperature is going to move via lateral spinal thalamic. Um, touch and pressure pretty much is going to, is going to move via the uh, fasciculus cuneatus, fasciculus gracilis, and anterior, anterior spinal thalamic. So this information moves up these specific tracks to the thalamus. The thalamus then routes the information to the postcentral gyrus of the parietal lobe and I actually understand or I experience the feeling there of burning my hand and my arm. So now I want to elicit a motor response. So what do I do? The motor response is elicited in the precentral gyrus of the frontal lobe, which then routes that information past the thalamus to the spinal cord following descending spinal tracts. Typically the corticospinals are the big conscious you know, tracks for carrying conscious motor information. Those uh, pyramidal tracks then are going to carry the information to where they need to exit, which is going to be in my cervical spine, out via the spinal nerves, following an efferent pathway to the effector muscles, which are going to be the muscles of my wrist and hand, and I set the coffee down. So that is our sensory motor pathway. Thank you.